wonder what your furry best friend would tell you if he could? Well, so did I. And so I called a pet psychic and learned some fascinating things. That made me curious about what other animals really think. Rover Says is the podcast where we share the real-life stories of what animals have told pet psychics. I'm your host, Nancy Aziz. There's just this thing when you look into a dog's eyes and you've got that bond. It's just it's something like nothing else. But you just want to cuddle him all the time and you just want to talk to him all the time. And it's just, it's just amazing. That's Angela Burton. To say she's a dog lover is a bit of an understatement. She's owned a few dogs, but she's rescued more than 500. Through her dog rescue in Lake Forest, California, called Muttley Crew, she rescues many dogs that have been neglected or abused and gives them love and attention to help them heal. On the day we sat down to talk, I met some of Angela's current crew. And that's Brock over there. He had he was thrown out of a truck, so he's got a little bit of brain damage. And that one's Ollie. He wants to eat everything in sight because I don't think he got much food and much care when wherever he was in the backyard for a year. Angela admits she's drawn to misfit dogs, and that helps explain how she wound up with Nacho. And you've had 500 dogs, so that's yes. a pretty big compliment. There's nobody, nobody, no dog will ever match up to my little Natch. What does this little character look like? I've never seen a picture. Little character looks like... Oh, honey. <laughs> He's sweet. He is a little one ear up, one ear down chihuahua with the longer legs. There's different versions of chihuahuas. He's one of the longer legged ones, as you can see from the picture. But that one ear up, one ear down thing just killed me. I just thought, oh my God, the cutest ever. So that was it. <laughs> Angela knew it from the first minute she saw Nacho at the animal shelter. And I saw this little guy like way in the back on his little stall thing. And I thought, oh, God, poor guy, you know, stuck way in the back. So I called the fella over. I said, what's the situation with this one? He said, oh no, he says, he's been returned twice for biting. He's, you know, he's not a good candidate. I said, well, I said, let me see him. I said, he's, you know, just let him come out. So I could see him trying to get the leash in the hand and Nacho was ready for biting him as well, right? And I thought, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. So anyway, I took him out and walked around there and, and then I sat down on this little bench and he came out, you know, he's sitting there and I petted him and I thought, you know what? I'm taking this guy because there's something about him. I don't know, maybe because he was an oddball, maybe because nobody wanted him. So I went back and I said to the guy, He's, that's it, I want him. And he says, you sure? I said, I'm absolutely sure. And that was it. So Angela brought Nacho home and gave him a good life. But yeah, we used to play. I don't think he ever learned how to play before. And I taught him how to play. And he was so awkward at it, especially when he started getting friendly with other dogs. He would try and play, but he would kind of headbutt them. <laughs> They'd kind of look at him like, Really? What is this? <laughs> Cutest thing ever. Nacho bonded with Angela and never bit her, but he didn't like anyone else. He wanted to bite everybody and growl at everybody and bark at everybody. He didn't like people, didn't like dogs, all that kind of thing. Angela tried to get Nacho to behave. She hired trainers and even brought in an energy healer. That helped a bit, but Nacho was still aggressive. So Angela tried something completely different something she says she wasn't even sure she believed in. She went to see a pet psychic. There's a group of people and they've all got pictures of their dogs. And you know, you kind of like, you don't tell her that much. You just kind of go in with you. And then she'll come around and she'll go and she'll look at the picture and she'll say, okay, ah. And you know, it's as if she's tuning into something. I am Frances Greenspan. And I am an animal communicator. I speak with animals that are here and those that have crossed over. And my favorite clients are rescues. And then those that have crossed over because many times there are unanswered questions that are still burning that uh, clients want to know. 
Greenspan is the animal communicator Angela sought out to get help for Nacho. How do you talk to an animal? How do you get this animal to, to open up to you and to tell you their innermost thoughts? How does that work? I can't exactly tell you a how it works. <laughs> it's a God thing. <laughs> but I can tell you when it's time for me to tune in. I tune in telepathically to their name and usually introducing by saying hi and their name and then how are you and sometimes they respond with why who are you what do you want <laughs> and it's all telepathic so i'm hearing uh what i say their thinking voice and my thinking voice uh is how i telepathically on a different level than what we're doing here um, because it's not out loud. So I don't need to know horse language, dog language, any of those things. And as a matter of fact, I did this with clients in Tokyo a few years back, and I didn't have to know Japanese for the pet. I did need a translator for the human, <laughs> but not for the pet. Pet and I got along just fine. We understood each other. Greenspan first realized she had a talent for communicating with animals when she was working as a dog groomer. I had what I call a brother and sister, the little girl, the yippie poodle, and a toy poodle, and her brother was a Lhasa Apso. And so I, I'm in the back of the office and, and nobody is there but me. So I talk out loud, out loud to the animals. I've always done that. I'm only child. I always talk to my animals. <laughs> so I had my little yippy poodle mm -hmm. and I said, I'm done with you. It's your brother's turn. And I put her in the kennel and then I put the brother on the table and I said out loud to him, she gets all the attention, doesn't she? And in my head, I heard, yep, she's mom's and I'm dad's. And I went, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I finished him up. I called the parents. I brought them forward and I had to go in the back for something. I come back up. Mom's got Yippie in her arms. Dad's got loss in his lap. Mm -hmm. And dad says to me, we call him Mr. Personality. And it sounded just like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> So then I just start experimenting and <laughs> talking with my clients and asking questions. And they didn't really know why I was asking, but I was confirming things for the animal that they wanted to know. <laughs> Eventually, she quit grooming and became a pet psychic, which brings us back to her communication with Nacho. Angela went to the session with Nacho's picture and her friend Nancy, who had been a frequent target of Nacho's aggression. Angela told Greenspan about Nacho's issues. And I said to her, I said, he just doesn't like people, you know. I said, and my friend Nancy, he just doesn't like. And she went, Nacho, you need to not be like that with Nancy because Nancy's your mommy's friend and your mommy likes her. So you need to not be <laughs> I'm sitting there, me and Nancy's going. And then she went off onto other dogs and other topics and that. But I remember that conversation and it was just a brief regarding Nacho. So when we came out after the whole session had finished and we come back home, she was bringing me home. I said, do you want to come in? So she came in and oh my God, I swear he came over to her and she could pet him. And she went, this is freaky deek. She said, this is really strange. I said, well, maybe it's a fluke, I don't know. She says, no, look at this though. And never again was he any way aggressive towards her after that. So, you know, it kind of blew us away, to be honest. I mean, we laughed about it at first, I said, but then, you know, it was true. She really, whatever she did. Greenspan says she rarely gets to hear what happens with pets after they leave her sessions. So I shared with her what happened with Nacho. It makes me feel good that uh, recognizing that, that they understood what I was asking them to do. That's why I feel like I'm here to help. I love helping relationships with the animals and their owners. My relationship was always great with him, so, but it certainly changed his relationship with other people. 
because you know I would say to him you were such a good boy with Nancy so when anybody else comes in now you need to just chill and then shortly after that I got my rescue and I started bringing more dogs into the house and at first he's like seriously who are these dogs coming in here but after that his whole personality changed he was brilliant with dogs really good with people and I always used to say to him you've come a long way Nacho spent 15 years with Angela he died at age 17 his favorite food later in life was turkey bacon I always knew if he stopped eating turkey bacon then that would kind of be it so when I took him to the vet that lunchtime I said you know he won't eat anything he won't even eat his turkey bacon and she says can you know we need to I said I know but I can't do it right this second and she says well bring him back at five o'clock and you can spend the afternoon with him and I said I wish I could get him to it she says I'm going to give him a shot she gave him a shot. My God, my nacho ate like seven slices of turkey bacon that afternoon. Just scoffed it down like it was the best thing in the whole world. Broke my heart because that was like the, his last supper, you know, <laughs> his turkey bacon. But I was just happy that he had his last feast on turkey bacon. But I say good morning to him every morning. His little paw print is up there on my, where I go by for my breakfast. And I always say good morning to him. I've got his little box with his ashes in on my coffee table. My best friend ever. It's so weird because in my bed, there used to be like Brock, one dog here. Nacho's spot was always just under the pillow here and then Casper and whoever else. This spot is still empty in my bed. None of them go into it. Brock still stays in his own spot and Casper's where he is. Kimmy's a new one, so she goes down the bottom, but nobody goes under the pillow under that, in that spot. Sometimes I think, God, is he just like there? saying, don't you dare pinch my space in the bed. <laughs> I think he might be. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I'd like to think that. Well, you know, I like to think that too. But they were all there when he was there and he was, I mean, obviously for years. So maybe they're just keeping it open for him for when he comes back. Thanks for listening to Rover Says. If you like the show, please rate it and share so other people who love animals can hear about it. And we want to hear from you. Tell us about your experiences with what your pets tell you or what they've told animal communicators. If you'd like to know more about animal communicator Francis Greenspan or Angela's Rescue Muttley crew, please check out our show notes. I'm Nancy Aziz. We drop new episodes every other Wednesday.